The Su-57, Russia's highly anticipated stealth fighter, has captured the imagination of aviation enthusiasts and defense analysts alike. With its cutting-edge technology and advanced capabilities, the Su-57 represents a significant milestone in Russia's quest to develop a formidable fifth-generation fighter. However, the journey to bring this aircraft to fruition has been far from smooth. From its origins in the Cold War era to the challenges faced during development and the ongoing debates surrounding its effectiveness, the Su-57's story is one of ambition, setbacks, and the pursuit of technological superiority. In the late 1970s, as the nation faced significant challenges, the Soviet Union expressed the need for a next-generation fighter that would enter service during the 1990s. This led to the initiation of two separate programs, the multifunctional and the light frontline fighters. While Mikoyan focused on the development of the MFI, which resulted in the creation of the MIG 1.44, 1.42, and other variants, Sukhoi simultaneously embarked on a program of their own, independently developing the technology required for a next-generation fighter. This endeavor led to the creation of the forward-swept wing S-32, later known as the S-47. Unfortunately, the MFI faced repeated delays due to a lack of funding caused by the dissolution of the USSR. Consequently, the Russian Ministry of Defense decided to cancel both the multifunctional and light frontline fighter initiatives. In their place, they introduced the Prospective Aeronautical Complex of Frontline Air Force Program, PAC-FA, touted as a more modern and affordable alternative to the primary objective to produce a single, multi-role, fifth-generation fighter that could effectively replace both the Su-27 and the MIG-29. However, again the approaches taken by Sukhoi and the Quan differed fundamentally. While the latter initially pursued the E-721, a smaller design, they eventually lost against the larger and more capable Sukhoi T-50. By the spring of 2002, Sukhoi emerged as the winner, becoming the lead design bureau for the new fighter, and their conceptual design was approved by the ministry. Following two and a half years of development, government funding increased, and the development stage was finally completed. This marked the commencement of construction for the first prototypes. However, in 2007, the T-50's maiden flight had to be postponed due to unspecified technical problems. Two years later, Air Force Commander-in-Chief Alexander Zelen acknowledged that engine issues remained unresolved. Despite several delays and setbacks, the program progressed with the successful completion of the first taxi test in January 2010. The program gradually moved forward, producing a total of 10 flying prototypes and three non-flying prototypes for preliminary flight tests in state trials. However, the initial prototypes revealed a significant issue, as they demonstrated poor fatigue life and developed early structural cracks. Consequently, the aircraft required structural redesign, including an increase in composite materials, a reinforced airframe, an elongated tail sting, and an enhanced wingspan. Although the initial plan called for six prototypes before full-scale production, the sixth flyable prototype became part of the second stage of refurbished aircraft. Moreover, the last two flying prototypes served as test articles for the final Su-57 production aircraft, fully equipped with mission systems. Despite the structural redesign, the standard takeoff weight increased to 25 tons, albeit with reduced weight growth in the second stage. Unfortunately, a series of accidents during testing further delayed the program. In fact, the delivery of the first production fighter was pushed back from 2015 to 2020. The original T-50 prototype faced numerous setbacks before eventually transitioning into the adopted final version, the Su-57. During the public showcase in 2011, two airframes suffered cracks during flight, even with the imposed 5G restriction. Additionally, the models experienced engine problems, including compressor stalls. In 2014, one prototype encountered an engine fire, and five years later, another prototype crashed during factory trials in eastern Russia prior to its delivery to the Russian military. The CEO of the company resigned following the factory incident, further hampering the program and adding to the fighter's troubled history. Despite these setbacks, Russia proudly touts the Su-57 as the most capable fifth-generation fighter in the world, surpassing both the American F-22 and F-35. The Russian defense experts claim that the new fighter possesses extremely potent weapons and radar elements, along with a cutting-edge electronic warfare system. 
However, the Russian military has faced criticism for making ambitious promises without delivering on them. One of the major culprits behind the sluggish progress of the advanced fighter is its engines. Originally, the engineers intended to power the aircraft with the latest ISDALI-30 engine. However, due to compatibility issues, they were forced to fall back on the older, but reliable, Saturn AL-41 F1 engine. In spite of the setbacks, the SU program continues to hold promise with its innovative features. One notable advancement is the ability to soft kill incoming missiles, enhancing the fighter's survivability. This system, if it works adequately, could prove to be a significant advantage in combat situations. However, the reliability and effectiveness of this system remains to be seen. As of now, the number of operational Su-57s in Russia remains limited. While there are plans to have 22 more aircraft within the next two years, the total fleet of 76 Su-57s is expected to be achieved by 2028. The Russian military has demonstrated the limited use of the Su-57, deploying it selectively and only when it is out of range of surface-to-air missiles. Critics also argue that the Su-57 is not as stealthy as the F-22, F-35, or even the Chinese J-20, casting doubt on its true level of advancement. While it possesses some stealth capabilities, the overall advancement of the aircraft remains uncertain. In the meantime, Russian media is likely to emphasize the Su-57 as a superior alternative to American and Chinese stealth fighters. The marketing efforts will continue to highlight the strengths of the aircraft and downplay its weaknesses in order to attract potential foreign buyers. After all, developing a modern fighter aircraft is an incredibly expensive undertaking, even without setbacks, delays, and cost overruns. This is why the Russian government hopes to recoup some of the costs by selling the export version of the Su-57, known as the Su-57E, to foreign militaries. This practice is common in the defense industry, where countries often seek to export their military equipment to offset development expenses. However, the Su-57E has faced challenges in finding buyers. While there was initial interest from countries like the United Arab Emirates, concerns about potential U.S. sanctions prevented them from signing any contracts. Similarly, Iraq expressed interest, but did not proceed with an official deal. India, which initially showed interest in the Su-57, eventually decided that the fighter did not meet its requirements for stealth and avionics. As a result, India withdrew from the contract. Despite these hurdles, there is one confirmed order for the Su-57. Algeria has signed a contract for 14 aircrafts and expects to receive its first Su-57 in 2028. This represents a potential breakthrough for Russia in securing an export market for its advanced fighter. Amid the ongoing development and challenges faced by the Su-57 program, there have been reports suggesting that the fighter is already operational in Ukraine. However, the exact nature of its missions remains unclear. Some experts speculate that the Su-57 may be deployed to fire standoff missiles outside of Ukrainian air defenses or even within Russian airspace. On the other hand, even if the aircraft performs as expected, there is no doubt that the Russian defense industry will undoubtedly face challenges in the coming years due to Western sanctions and the financial resources allocated to the ongoing conflict. The true combat readiness of the Su-57 fleet remains uncertain, and its performance in actual combat scenarios is yet to be tested. Still, the Su-57 holds promise as a fifth-generation fighter with advanced capabilities. While Russia continues to market the aircraft as a superior alternative to its competitors, skepticism remains regarding its true capabilities. The limited number of operational Su-57s and the challenges in finding export buyers raises questions about the program's long-term success. Only time will tell if the Su-57 can live up to its potential and become a dominant force in the world of fighter aviation. What do you think of this Russian fighter? Can it live up to its name? Tell us in the comments below. This brings us to the end of this video. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. See you next time.